Welcome to the Hot Start TBM 900. If this is your first time in the airplane, please take a few minutes to watch this tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll go over the basic procedure to start up the airplane. Although you have no doubt reviewed all appropriate technical documentation and are familiar with all the knobs and switches in the cockpit, let's quickly review some of the most important ones for starting up the airplane. We will deliberately skip some emergency controls. Those will be covered in other tutorials. Mounted just above the windshield is the overhead panel. It is divided into sections from left to right. External lights, internal lights, electrical systems, engine starting, fuel system, autopilot trim. In front of you is the main instrument panel, consisting of the pilot's primary flight display, PFD-1, the multifunction display, MFD, co-pilot's primary flight display, PFD-2, the autopilot control panel, the electronic standby instrument, the intercom panel. On the bottom of the main instrument panel is a raised chin with several sub-panels organized from left to right as follows. Ice protection systems, parking brake control, landing gear control, MFD keypad, environmental control system. Aft of the main instrument panel and located between the pilot and co-pilot is the raised pedestal consisting of the power lever, the flap selector handle, the manual elevator trim wheel, the electric aileron trim rocker switch, the fuel tank selector. And that's it. As you can see, there's not that many controls in the TBM 900 and they're all logically grouped and placed in a way to allow quick and easy access. Before we go on, please note that we will not go over every step in the engine starting procedure as listed in the pilot's operating handbook. We'll just try to perform a quick and easy startup and you're encouraged to review the full procedure once you have a general understanding of the sequence of steps. Before starting up the avionics, we need to make sure certain controls are in certain positions this helps prevent some systems suddenly coming into motion as soon as electrical power is applied to the airplane. Reviewing the overhead, we want to make sure that all switches and levers are down except for the ignition switch. This switch is kept in auto at all times, all the way up. On the lower part of the main panel, we check to make sure the parking brake is applied. Please note that to apply the parking brake, it isn't sufficient just to rotate the knob. You need to depress the pedal brakes fully and then rotate the knob to lock the pedals in place. Do so now. The landing gear control lever is down. On the pedestal, the power lever is in the cutoff position that is fully back. The flap lever is up and the flaps on the wings are also up. The fuel tank selector is selected either left or right. With these checks completed, we can now apply electrical power to the aircraft. On the overhead, push the red and black striped lever up. This is called a crash bar. With the crash bar up, the avionics will power up into a minimal power consumption mode. This mode is used for conserving battery power if you are, for example, sitting on the ground waiting for a clearance to be issued. In a few moments, a pair of red and yellow push buttons above the PFD will illuminate, accompanied by an oral chime. These are the master caution and master warning attention getter buttons. To cancel the alerts and silence the chime, press on both buttons. To completely start up the avionics, on the electrical panel on the overhead, position the source selector switch to the back position. Let's give the remaining screens a moment to start up. Aura warning, okay.
Next, we will review the list of cast messages. We would expect to see the following. Park brake, because we have applied the parking brake. Fuel press, for a low fuel pressure. Oh, oil test. press, okay. for a low oil pressure. Low voltage, indicating that the battery is discharging. Auto cell, indicating that the fuel tank automatic selector isn't on. Vacuum low, indicating that the engine driven vacuum pump is not running. With these checks completed, we are now in a good position to start the engine. I will first do the start for you, explaining what I'm doing along the way. Then I will let you do it. Because the process is rather quick, I will be pausing the simulation along the way to explain the steps. First, we prepare the fuel system. The engine likes to receive pressurized fuel during start, so we place the auxiliary boost pump aux BP switch to the on middle position. We verify that we get an aux boost pump on CAS message and then we can hear the pump running. We check that the prop area is clear. To initiate the start, we hold the starter switch in the on position for 2 seconds. Afterwards, the starter will latch and keep going, so we can release the starter switch. Next, we look at the cast messages and verify that starter and ignition are illuminated. Before introducing fuel, we check that the ITT value is below 150 degrees Celsius and that the NG value is at least 13%. We can now introduce fuel by lifting the power lever and moving it one step forward to the low idle position. We monitor the ITT rise and NG acceleration. The ITT will rise rapidly at first, then slow down and stop before reaching the red mark. If the ITT exceeds the red mark, or if the NG acceleration is too sluggish, less than 30% NG by 30 seconds after initiating the start, we move the power lever back to the cutoff position. After introducing fuel, never abort the start using the starter switch on the overhead, as this can destroy the engine. Continue monitoring the NG rise. At 42% NG, a few events will happen. Up until now, the engine was being fed through the primary fuel nozzles. These do not provide enough fuel flow to fully start the engine, so now a secondary set of fuel nozzles will start spraying fuel into the combustion chamber. This will manifest as a second spike in ITT and a sudden rise in fuel flow. Having reached 52% NG, the starter now disconnects. We verify that both the starter and ignition cast messages are extinguished. After the engine is stabilized, we move the power lever forward and to the left to move it into the flight idle position. The propeller will now unfeather and accelerate above the yellow RPM band, providing cooling air to the engine compartment. We now only have a few items left. On the ice protection panel, we position the inertial separator inert SEP switch to up. On the overhead, position the generator switch to main, position the aux BP switch to auto, position the fuel cell switch to auto, position the AP trim switch to on. On the ECS panel, Position the bleed switch to auto. Position the AC switch to auto. And that concludes the engine start. The airplane is now ready for taxi. However, I will reset the aircraft back to its original shutdown state so you can practice performing the engine start. I won't control your camera anymore, but I will give you hints on where to find the controls. Let's begin by making sure all controls on the overhead are down, except for the ignition switch, which must be in auto. Next, we check that the parking brake is applied and that the landing gear lever is down. The power lever is in cutoff, the flaps are up, and the fuel tank selector is set to either left or right. All checks complete, let's start up the avionics. Lift the crash bar up and position the source selector to bat. We'll give the avionics a moment to start up. 
Cancel any chimes as necessary by pressing the master caution and master warning buttons on the main instrument panel. Review the cast messages. Here are the ones we expect. Park brake, fuel press, oil press, low voltage, auto cell, vacuum low. Okay. Let's prepare the fuel system. Position the AUX BP switch to ON. Prop area clear. Activate the starter by holding the starter switch in the ON position for 2 seconds. Verify starter and ignition cast messages are shown. ITT below 150 degrees Celsius and G more than 13%. Go ahead and introduce fuel by moving the power okay. lever one notch forward. Monitor the ITT rise and NG acceleration. The start doesn't look good. Put the power lever to cut off. Thirty percent NG by thirty seconds. Engine stabilized. Push the power lever forward and left into the flight idle position. Inertial separator on. On the overhead, generator to main, aux BP to auto, fuel cell to auto, and AP trims to on. On the ECS panel, lead switch to auto and AC switch to auto. And that's it. The airplane is now ready for taxi.